Hey everyone, my name is Alvin Chong and I'm a mechanical engineer on the design for service and repair team here at Microsoft. Today, we're going to disassemble the Surface Laptop Studio 2 and I'll be demonstrating the repairability features on one of our most repairable Surface devices. In fact, all you're going to need to disassemble your Laptop Studio is a plastic spudger, a pair of plastic tweezers, a plastic guitar pick, a clamp, and a Torx Plus screwdriver for the 3IP and 6IP screws. Please note that I'm only going to demonstrate how to disassemble the device and how to access the replaceable components at a high level. So before attempting repair, please consult the detailed instructions and follow the safety guidelines in the Surface Laptop Studio 2 service guide on the Microsoft support website. Before we start, all repairs should be performed on an electrostatic discharge safe surface with grounding to protect the device. Also, please remove all jewelry like watches or rings. With that, we're going to get started. First, ensure the battery is fully discharged, then shut down the device through the window system, flip it over, and orient the device so the hinge is facing away from you. We're going to get started by removing the two feet with a plastic spudger. As you remove the feet, it's a little bit easier if you come in kind of at the corner right here and lift up. Once you get that corner up, you can peel it off with your hands. Now with the feet removed, we're going to start working on the bottom cover. We'll be using a 3IP screwdriver, and we recommend that you count screws and place them away from your device as you go along. This is to ensure that there will be no loose screws remaining inside your device when it comes time to reassemble it. We want to avoid causing any possible damage to the battery or to avoid creating any other unsafe conditions. Now with the screws off, using a plastic spudger and a plastic guitar pick, we can now gently separate the two enclosure covers, leaving the reusable cosmetic plate around the edges attached. We heard your feedback and replaced the screws underneath the plate with magnets, so your cosmetic plate can be reused. As you separate the covers, there will be some adhesive at a few locations, so make sure your device is on a flat surface to avoid touching the battery. As you separate the two enclosure covers, place it down carefully to avoid any damage to the cable connecting the battery to the motherboard. Now before unplugging this cable connecting the battery pack to the motherboard, the next step is actually going to be removing the solid state drive to shut down power to the whole system. To do that, all we'll need is a 3IP screwdriver. As you unscrew and remove this component, please do not use any sharp tools and be mindful of dropping any screws. We'll also want to remove and replace the thermal pad underneath it with the new one that came in your replacement kit. Now that we've removed the solid state drive, we can unplug the battery cable with the labeled pull tab. As you unplug this, make sure that you're not touching or pressing on the battery in any way. On this subassembly, you'll notice that the battery has multiple stretch to release pull tabs. These are to aid with disassembly of the battery when it comes to end of life recycling and are not for any replacement purposes. The battery should not be discarded in the municipal solid waste stream and must be managed per any applicable waste disposal laws along with all waste residuals of the repair process. As you put away this bottom cover with the battery assembly, Make sure that you put it safely away from other objects and on a stable surface with the battery facing up. You don't want anything to potentially dent or damage the battery. Since we now have access to the many replaceable internal components of the device, we can really go into easily repairing a variety of different components, depending on what you need. In fact, early in the mechanical design phases, we made it a priority to enable repair for issues we saw that most often impacted your experience. We also wanted to make that repair process as easy as possible, so you could get back to enjoying your device as soon as possible. Big thanks to the great work done by the various teams to make this a reality. So although we can easily repair a variety of different components at this point, today we'll start with the display module. For this, we'll need a 6IP screwdriver, a 3IP screwdriver, and a plastic spudger. We're going to start by disconnecting these four display cables.
And then there will be four 3IP screws holding down the tensioners on the cables. As we continue removing the display module, we're going to want to make sure the four display cables are fully disconnected from the motherboard as well. So if needed, use both your hands to gently move the cable away from the motherboard. Now to continue, we're going to want to loosen the eight screws holding down the hinges with a 6IP screwdriver. Be sure only to just loosen them and not to fully remove them yet. Now to continue removing the display module, we're going to want to tilt the device on its side and use a clamp to hold down the display. And now we want to remove all eight of the 6IP screws. I recommend removing two from each side first. Now with all eight screws removed, we're going to want to gently and carefully remove the keyboard subassembly. Now that the display module is off, next thing we're going to remove is the service connect port and the audio jack. For this, all we'll need is a 3IP screwdriver and a plastic spudger. In fact, we wanted to minimize the different types of screw head types to make repair as easy as possible for you, and so the 3IP driver is the only one you will need to remove the remaining screws for the disassembly of your device. During repair though, if any screws get attracted to magnets like the one here on the service connect port, do not use any sharp tools to retrieve them. You may see throughout the disassembly process here that I'm using plastic tip tweezers. Now with the bracket removed, we can easily access the service connect port and the audio jack. We'll start with the service connect port. Now for the service connect port, we're going to have four screws that can be removed with the 3IP driver. We have two screws that hold the bracket down to the motherboard and two screws that hold the service connect port to the actual subassembly. With the plastic spudger, we can remove the connections from the service connect port to the motherboard. Once that's disconnected, we can wiggle out the service connect port. Now moving on to the audio jack, we can first remove the connection using a plastic spudger to unlatch the connector. There's going to be two more 3IP screws. Now we can wiggle that out as well. Now we'll remove the micro SD port right underneath the audio jack with the same tools. For this micro SD port, we have four screws that can be removed with a 3IP driver as well. We have two screws holding the bracket to the motherboard and then two screws for the micro SD port itself. As you remove this micro SD port, be careful of the connector interfering with the tweeter cable so make sure you route it down and underneath this cable here. Moving over to the right side of the device now, we can also remove the USB-C and A ports with the same tools, starting with this bracket. After removing the bracket, you can see here that this bottom USB-C port is actually separate from this USB-A and C port, and can be replaced independently of the other port for your convenience. As you remove these screws, you may need to push gently the flexible circuit here so you can fit in the screwdriver. Be sure to disconnect these connections first before removing the screws on the ports themselves to make sure the screwdriver does not interfere with the connections. When removing this port, be careful not to pull directly up on the flexible circuit, but to bring the ports out of the chassis itself first. Now looking at the lower half of the device, we can now remove the fans. As we remove the fans, please pay attention to the rubber grommets underneath it that we will be reusing.
As you remove the fans, please use plastic tip tweezers to help remove the tape that's holding down the fans. Moving forward, we can also remove the nearby subwoofer speakers. As we remove the subwoofer cables, you can see that there are actually matching dots on the motherboard to help with identification when reconnecting either the subwoofer cable or the similar looking tweeter cable right next to it. There will be three screws holding down the speaker as well. You can take those out with a 3IP screwdriver. Next, we can work on removing the motherboard. We are excited to announce that this is now an easily replaceable component on the laptop Surface Studio 2. I just want to take a second here to recognize the amazing work the cross-functional team has done to make this device as repairable as it is now. Throughout the disassembly so far, you may have noticed that the display module and all of the connectors, speakers, and fans were all easily removable without the use of hidden adhesives or glues. That will also remain true as we remove the motherboard with the same 3IP screwdriver. So to begin taking out the motherboard, we're going to start by removing the two screws holding down the thermal module here, and all of the connectors and cables that are still attached from left to right. With those connectors and cables disconnected from the motherboard, we can now move on to the 14 screws. You will notice that to make them easier to find, we've added a gold outline around each of them. And for any screws that might be hard to see at first, we've also added an obvious indicator on a nearby component, like this one here on the battery cable. As a reminder, we recommend that you count screws and place them away from your device as you go along. This is to ensure that there will be no loose screws remaining inside your device when it comes time to reassemble it. We want to avoid causing any possible damage to the battery or to avoid creating any other unsafe conditions. Now with all 14 screws removed, we can now gently remove the motherboard. Make sure that no connectors are still attached. Now with the motherboard removed, the last thing we have here for a full disassembly are the tweeters. For the tweeters, we're going to have two screws on each of them, and those can be removed with the 3IP screwdriver. And with that, we finished disassembly of the new Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio 2. When reassembling, always count your screws, especially those near any magnets or the battery pack. Thank you for your time, and I really hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please find more detailed instructions on the service guide available on the Microsoft website.